Hello, my name is Jack Jackson. Thank you for joining me today to learn about the practice of forest stewardship. The practice of forest stewardship is a dedication to the healthy preservation, protection, and perpetuation of actively managed forests with particular focus on water quality, wildlife habitat, recreational opportunities, and renewable forest resources. Having spent nearly 40 years as a forester for the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, I can tell you that our Commonwealth is rich in the beauty of its natural resources. Sound forest stewardship can help us keep it that way for future generations. Together, let's take a look at how that's done. Forests are significant local and sustainable sources of clean air and water wildlife habitat, beautiful landscapes, and wood products. The City of Haverhill has made efforts over the years to acquire such valued open space, much of which is protecting our drinking water supply. These efforts have led to the creation of many conservation areas that provide passive recreational opportunities for our community. However, until recently, the City did not regularly manage its forests. This is leading some of our forests to stand densities that do not allow sunlight to reach the forest floor to encourage new forest growth. Other concerns with unmanaged forests are extensive storm damage, increased densities that make it easier for disease and insects to invade and do serious damage to a forest, increased potential forest fires, and the loss of forest cover due to age. Stewardship options are available that can actually improve water quality, wildlife habitat, and perpetuation of our forest lands. Examples of stewardship objectives for any piece of forest land could include such things as maximizing habitat value for specific or an array of wildlife, increasing recreational value, or maximizing periodic income from forest products. Another aspect of forest stewardship is aesthetics. And what we have here is a beautiful example of a sugar maple. The tree probably is 250 to 300 years old. It's got a beautiful symmetrical crown to it. And it's probably about three feet to 40 inches in diameter. And we want to highlight this tree to the hikers that are walking through this area. So our management scheme here was to cut all the small hemlocks out of this area to show off this big beautiful tree. And uh, the operator did a fine job. It is important in the stewardship planning process to consider a broad range of goals that might be applicable for each given area. In some instances, leaving land alone may be the best way to conserve it. But that's just one of many stewardship options. The importance of stewardship goals should be measured not only against one another for a given area, but also against the goals of other forests. The City of Haverhill is analyzing each of its forests with respect to the importance of a number of goals. Let's take a quick look at these goals. Water quality protection. Forests provide a very effective natural buffer that holds soil in place and protects the purity of our water. The trees, understory vegetation, and the organic material on the forest floor reduce the impact of falling rain and help to ensure that soil will not be carried into our streams and waterways. Biological diversity. Biological diversity is in part a measure of the variety of plants and animals, the communities they form, and the ecological processes such as water and nutrient cycling that sustain them. With the recognition that each species has value, individually and as a part of its natural community, maintaining biodiversity has become an important resource management goal. And you can see over my left shoulder here what is called an early successional stage, which is all the young growth coming up, the young shrubs, provides great wildlife habitat for diversity of birds, diversity of animals, the, uh, the fruit here is good for the birds. They can browse, the deer can browse on the, uh, on the brush and on the leaves and on the buds. And this was caused by a wind event that actually snapped that tree off behind us. And that is now referred to as a snag. 
it's just a dead standing tree. But because that tree was removed by Mother Nature, more sunlight has got into this small section of woods, creating the undergrowth, allowing it to come up and flourish. And this is what uh, you would be doing if you had a timber sale on your woodlot. By creating openings, by cutting out trees, you would do what Mother Nature does naturally. We have to do it mechanically. But this is great wildlife habitat, great biological diversity, because now you've got this uh, log laying on the ground. Salamanders will live under there, centipedes, and all kinds of bugs that need to keep their skin moist. Wildlife habitat. Enhancing the wildlife potential of a forested property is a common and important goal for many woodland owners. Sometimes actions can be taken to benefit a particular species of interest. For example, installing bird nesting boxes. In most cases, recommended management practices can benefit many species and fall into one of three broad strategies. These are managing for diversity, protecting existing habitat, and enhancing existing habitat. One thing we look for as we walk through woodlots is to uh, try to find insect infestations. And this is a hemlock branch and these white spots are called hemlock woolly adelgid. And it's an insect that sits at the base of each needle and feeds on the needle. And eventually all the needles on the tree will be killed. The insect sucks the juices out of the needle and the needles will die and eventually the tree will die. And this is a serious insect infestation that's coming through New England. Uh, over the last 10 or 12 years, and eventually probably will kill all the hemlocks. Well, this is a pine cone from a white pine tree, which all these big trees are. It's dropped its seed last fall, and some of the seed has sprouted right here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little white pine seedlings. And this is uh, exactly what we're looking for in this job, is to get more sunlight down into the forest floor to let these seedlings come up and be the next crop of trees. Recreational usage and aesthetics. Recreational opportunities and aesthetics quality are the most important values for many forest landowners and represent a valid goal in and of themselves. Removing interfering vegetation can open a vista or highlight a beautiful tree, for example. When a landowner's goals include timber, thoughtful forest management can be used to accomplish silvicultural objectives while also reaching recreational and aesthetic objectives. For example, logging trails might be designed to provide a network of cross-country ski trails that lead through a variety of habitats and reveal points of interest. Protection of unique and cultural areas Cultural resources are the places containing evidence of people who once lived in the area. Whether a Native American village from 1700 years ago or the remains of a farmstead from the 1800s, these features all tell important and interesting stories about the landscape and should be protected from damage or loss. Wood products. One part of forest stewardship can be harvesting wood products from your woodlot. We're here at a woodlot that has been marked for a timber sale, and I'd like to take a few minutes to explain the process. You can see trees that are marked in blue and trees that aren't marked in blue. The trees that are marked are the trees that are gonna be cut in this harvesting operation. You can notice that the tree is marked in two separate spots, one up high so the operator can see it, and then another mark down below the butt swell which is supposed to remain there for the entire operation and after the operation so that the forester knows that that tree was to be cut and the, and the operator didn't accidentally take a wrong tree. The way we determine uh, what trees get cut and what trees stay are by looking at the crowns of the tree. You can, for simple purposes today, we can describe a tree as the top part that's green, that has needles or leaves, and the bottom part, which is the structure of the tree, is called the bowl. That's where the wood products are. 
as you look up at the crown of this tree that's, that's not marked, we can see that the tree has a symmetrical crown. It's pretty equal all the way around. The crown comes down ideally about 25 to 30 percent of the total height of the tree. And that's, that's a good example of a tree that's going to stay. This tree that's marked here in blue has a weak crown. It's not symmetrical. It's only on one side. It's very small. It's less than probably 10 percent of the height of the tree. And that tree is growing very slow. All of these trees are the same age but you can see that some are much bigger in diameter than others. These are the much more healthy ones, so we want that to stay and put on more wood and grow in the future. And these other trees are weak and suppressed and should come out. The other thing I'd like to point out here is that you can see quite a distance in the understory. I can probably see two or 300 feet over to that other slope over there. That means there's very little reproduction in the understory. And by cutting out some of these trees, We'll get more sunlight down onto the forest floor, and that will cause uh, white pine seedlings, in this case, to sprout up, and that's our next generation of trees. If managed wisely, forests can produce a periodic flow of wood products on a sustained basis. Stewardship encompasses finding ways to meet your current needs while protecting the forest's ecological integrity. In this way, you can harvest timber and generate income without compromising the opportunities of future generations. While they've stopped working for a while, I just want to point out some of these products. These are all saw logs, and I think these are all 16 feet long. And these are cut from the bottom part of the tree. These are all white pine. Uh, most of these are 16 feet long. Over here we have some shorter logs, probably 12 footers. Uh, you can this one is from the butt of the tree. You can tell by the flare. This one is from further up, up in the tree. This uh, material is going to be taken to a sawmill to be cut into boards to be used as paneling, uh, finished lumber for furniture, for cabinets, boxes, all kinds of uses, furniture. And the final product that they're taking out of the woods is this is the tops of the trees. Too small for saw logs, too small for firewood, poor quality. They're going to put these right through the chipper. Okay, this is a pile of chips, comes out of the chipper here. This is basically the tops of the trees that aren't used as firewood or as saw timber. And these chips will go in that big truck up to Portsmouth and be burned uh, in the uh, big furnaces and produce electricity. The analysis of these goals and the preparation of stewardship plans require extensive experience in the field of forest management, as well as a significant amount of time to become intimately familiar with the forested community of each individual parcel. Forestry consultants are professionals with such experience and are capable of assisting landowners in the implementation of a stewardship program. All right, I'm gonna make an attempt to show you how a forester would mark the stand here. Um, first of all, you want to pick out the best looking tree in the group. And I'm going to pick this tree as a future crop tree. It's got smooth bark, it's got small branches, and it's got a straight bowl. It's got a pretty decent crown up there. So I'm going to leave this tree. Now what I'm going to do is mark trees around it so that the sunlight will hit the crown of this tree and the crown will expand and the tree will grow faster and put, put on some nice wood. So I'm going to mark this tree here, that tree there. Again, I'm marking it a height where the operator can see it and then below the stump swell where the state forester and the other forester who uh, is going to supervise the job can see that that tree was marked. And it's that simple. At present, the city of Haverhill owns more than 1,000 acres of forested lands primarily used for passive recreation, open space, and watershed protection. These lands fall under the jurisdiction of various municipal departments, such as conservation, water, and parks. The Forest Management Committee is pursuing the preparation of forest stewardship plans with 10-year horizons for a number of locations. Clement Farm Conservation Area, Crystal Gorge Conservation Area, Crystal Lake, 
Crystal Point Conservation Area, Dead Hill Reservoir, Gale Hill Reservoir, Meadow Brook Conservation Area, Plug Pond Recreation Area, Upper East Meadow River, Wheeler Woods Conservation Area, and Winnikinney Park Conservation Area. Having spent many years reviewing stewardship plans in Massachusetts, I can tell you that the Commonwealth's forests know the final success of your stewardship plan will be determined first by how well you are able to identify and define your goals, and second, by the support you find and the resources you commit to implement each step. It can be helpful and enjoyable to visit other properties to sample the range of management activities and see the accomplishments of others. This may help you visualize the outcome of alternative management decisions and can either stimulate new ideas or confirm your own personal philosophies. Don't hesitate to express your thoughts, concerns, and ideas. Keep asking questions. Please be involved and enjoy the fact that we are all stewards of a very special place. I hope you enjoyed today's visit into the world of forest stewardship. To learn more about practicing forest stewardship on your property, contact your local Conservation Commission office or the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Jack Jackson, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, take a hike at a local conservation area.